to uh, help us out with this thing? I'll uh, give it a try, Bob. Peter. This one's for you. Well, that's a bad sign. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has to save our skin. Wonderful girl. I'm going to kill her. I'm beginning to like her. Many outlets are reporting that Disney's newest venture, Galaxy's Edge, a Star Wars theme park, is a complete fail. Now, with the news of Katherine Powell, president of Disney Parks West, stepping down amidst low attendance rates, it looks like the House of Mouse is starting to regret sinking so much money into Star Wars before actually having a plan for their newly acquired franchise. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has completely fallen flat in attendance. This was something Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, was not anticipating. In fact, Iger believed that the parks would do so well, all he had to do was tweet that they were open and scores of Star Wars fans would come running towards the open gates. However, it turns out the theme park is losing so much money. They are having to cut employee hours in order to make up for the loss. The newest attempt to stir an interest in Galaxy's Edge is aggressive marketing and discount pricing. So... What happened? Why is Galaxy's Edge failing so hard? I can only assume that, just like with the new sequel movies, Galaxy's Edge just doesn't feel like Star Wars. Sure, there are some iconic pieces that let you know you're in the Star Wars universe, the Millennium Falcon, lightsabers, blue milk, and stormtroopers, but take those away and you're left with a generic sci-fi set that can be turned into a Firefly theme park if you added the Serenity ship and throw in some Reavers. My point is that Bob Iger should have stuck with the original plan to base the theme park on the original trilogy. Let's face it, Star Wars fans have grown up, and while Disney is still aiming to capture the eyes of a younger, newer fan base, it's the fans of the original and prequel trilogies who will be spending the money to visit a galaxy far, far away, not generic sci-fi set number one. We want to immerse ourselves in the Star Wars universe. We want to be surrounded by the trees of Endor while taking a photo with an Ewok, sit in the booth of a cantina where Han shot first, or even have our kids take some Jedi lessons inside the Jedi Temple. Let me put it this way. When I visited the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I felt like I was in the movie. Nothing felt unfamiliar. I got a wand from Ollivander's wand shop, ate lunch at the Leaky Cauldron, saw some goblets at Gringotts, and visited the Great Hall in Hogwarts Castle. Heck, I even got a picture in front of the night bus. I was completely in awe of how this park 100% mirrored its movie. This is what Galaxy's Edge is lacking. There has been no care taken with this park to mirror its movie counterpart, and the fans have taken notice. Bob Iger's decision to break away from the Skywalker saga and base Galaxy's Edge on the new Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy has backfired horribly. This decision came after seeing the dailies for The Force Awakens, and then deciding to base the new billion dollar park on the newer, more divisive Disney sequel movies instead of the more familiar prequel and original Star Wars movies. I can only assume he arrived at this decision by carelessly thinking that fans of the franchise would sink their money into anything called Star Wars, and Disney wouldn't have to pay royalties to George Lucas for using his iconic planets and characters. By basing their park on a planet called Batuu, a never-before-seen planet, Disney failed to capture the magic of Star Wars once again, and the fans aren't responding to Galaxy's Edge as well as Bob Iger had hoped. Galaxy's Edge could have been amazing. I was thrilled when news broke about this theme park, and I couldn't wait to visit and be surrounded by the familiarity of Star Wars. I mean, look how they handled Avatar. The world of Pandora was gorgeous, but unfortunately, Star Wars wasn't as lucky. Corporation greed got in the way of what could have been something really special. Plus, $200 for a lightsaber that breaks hours later? No thanks. Let's hope that Force Ghost Town works out for them. So, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it around if you like. Also, I hope you'll consider subscribing and let me know in the comments what new videos you'd like to see. Okay, I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.